Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. And today I'm using various different pride flags in order to make four different fantasy illustrations. We're starting with the lesbian flag, which is a mixture of bright reds and corals with a lot of different pinks. I know this flag isn't the most popular with everyone. It has kind of a complicated history, but it does seem to be the only one um, that is very recognizable uh, because people are still figuring out what to replace it with, so I decided to go with it anyway. A lot of people asked me to turn pride flags into character designs, and while I did love that idea, I was a little bit worried about reducing a whole sexuality or a gender orientation into just one person. Um, it felt like it could be a little bit like pigeonhole or something like that, so I decided instead to do a much more challenging prompt, which is basically to make full illustrations with like backgrounds and everything literally locked into the stripes of the flags. Now this turned out to be a much bigger challenge than I expected, um, particularly with this one and one other because the colors are so strong and so bright. Luckily this did have a band of white in the middle so I could blend any of the colors with um, white to make them a little paler but in general it's just super super strong and overpowering. Inspired by the color palette I decided to go with a desert rose theme. So I had this character sort of floating on this like pink sand desert um, and then I decided that the pink bands at the top would be sort of like a sunset whereas all of the reds at the bottom would be roses and the sand that our character is hovering over. I liked doing fantasy illustrations for all of these because I felt like it gave me more freedom to work with the different stripes and make really interesting environments and I had a lot of fun adding in all of these like super graphic um, clouds with this like painterly background behind them. I kind of like the blend of those two. I did some strong lighting as well because I wanted the character to be able to stand out even though the colors of the um, environment are so powerful. Um, and I decided to add a few colors that weren't strictly in the flag to the character just so that she had a chance to fight against all these super vibrant colors and also so she could have you know, some other more naturalistic um, colors on her body. I wanted there to be a story in this drawing, so I gave her this sword and decided that she was the guardian of these roses. Basically that she protects them in the hot summer desert. Um, and honestly, I think that she's a really fun character. She looks really cool in her environment. And I'm happy that I was able to stick pretty well with the uh, colors where they actually land um, in the flag, which I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to do. Next up is the gay pride flag. Now this is the one that most people I think know about. Um, it's super eye-catching with its bright rainbow stripes um, and it just seems to be pretty ubiquitous with uh, pride month in general. This is the one I was the least looking forward to because it's the most amount of colors and it's a ton of stripes. Um, but qu pretty quickly I actually started having an idea for what I was going to do with each of them. I started with um, basically turning that green stripe in the middle to a like mossy grove kind of area and then it was natural for the blue and purple to be um, water. But I didn't want to do just deep water, I decided it would actually be the edge of a waterfall. Um, so I had our central character like a fawn sort of character standing um, up to his thighs in water um, looking off into the distance. A lot of the times when I draw characters when I'm doing like a character design they're staring right uh, at the viewer or right out so that you can see their design really clearly but in an environment piece like this um, it's okay to have them sort of turned however you kind of want and I thought it had a more like wistful mysterious look to it so I ended up going with that. At first I was kind of annoyed with where the waterfall was being forced to drop off because of the stripes, but um, I actually like the idea that there's a deeper portion of this pool so that he's not about to like fall off the waterfall. Um, so I decided to keep that, otherwise I was going to try to move him up so that it would look like he's standing on the same level as where the waterfall is, but then he'd be like really really tall in the frame. I don't know, it was one of the parts I had the most trouble with. Um, I decided to use red for his hair and horns and then cooler colors on his outfit just so that he blends more with the environment. And um, I wanted to make sure that it doesn't just look like stripes, so I started trying to like render out a little bit more like shadows and stuff onto the mossy and grassy area, um, also just to give it a more naturalistic feel rather than just a big swath of green. Um, again, I did a sort of major shadow on the character to help them stand out. And I decided to put a dove in his hand, just sort of perching there as a very, um, maybe a little cliche, but very clear uh, metaphor for peace. 
and overall I just wanted it to be a very calming sort of natural scene. Um, it was hard to fight against these like Skittles colors that we're working with here, but in the end I actually feel like it turned out kind of like lush and wonderful, so um, I feel like this flag taught me to go a little brighter with my colors and not be such a pastels only kind of girl. <laughs> Next up is the buy flag, and as someone who is a Kinsey 3, I was really excited to do this one. Honestly, it's not my favorite color combination. I mean, I like the colors, but they're so saturated, um, so it was kind of stressing me out at first. But I had a clear vision right away that I wanted to use the blue and the purple parts as water, and I wanted the um, bright pink part to be the sky, so that basically the light from the sky was piercing through the blue water and creating this sort of purple zone. Um, I had like sort of an instant idea for that. I struggled a lot with the sketch for this one because at first I had this really like romantic looking drawing but then I was like I kind of don't want to do that because the other two that I did um, were sort of just like this very atmospheric singular character in the center of the uh, environment and I decided that if I was going to make them as a series it would look better if I kind of stuck to that more so I ended up going with something a little more funky um, and uh, I put this little like alien up in the sky and then I started to get more of an idea what I wanted this to look like so um, I put a bunch of like jellyfish sort of moving through the water and I had this shark mermaid that I wanted to be the central character I don't know I just love shark mermaids there's something about them that just really charmed me um, so I put in the bands and I tried to sort of figure out how I was gonna make those colors work in here um, I spent a lot of time sort of just uh, inking in the hair and everything I wanted it to sort of uh, be uh, like the tentacles, no, not tentacles, you know, the tendrils of the jellyfish, um, just so that the whole picture sort of melds together nicely. Um, and I decided to cut her face completely out of it, um, so it has more of this like spooky in the depths feeling, because when I looked at that like deep blue purpley color that's in the bi flag, I thought that like deep water was sort of the vibe I wanted to get. I mean, obviously it's not that deep because you can see the, the horizon super easy, but you know what I mean. I decided to leave the sky that super flat bright pink because I feel like it gave it this like interesting sort of pop art almost like vapor wavy kind of look. Um, I really like how extreme it is and then I decided to focus on making the water look a bit more realistic. I mean it's not realistic but it definitely has more of like an, a deep atmosphere look whereas the sky is like very pop arty and really like just like bam one color um, and I think that that combination is kind of uh, very eye-catching. Um, I put some heavy shadows over the character so she wasn't sticking out too much and messing with that bottom blue stripe and then we were done. Next up is the one that I think is personally the prettiest of the bunch, and that is the trans flag. Now, this has the pastels that I was looking for, and it's perfectly symmetrical too, which I really, really like. Um, at first I was worried that that symmetry was going to make it difficult for the uh, image to look balanced, but also be sort of like two different things at the top and the bottom, but it actually turned out to be easier than I thought. Um, so my first thought was ice cream and angels, because these pastels are just so, um, they're very ice creamy and they're very angelic. Um, I kept the angels, I lost the ice cream because I couldn't figure out why she would be <laughs> floating around with uh, this ice cream in her hand. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I thought that the blue up at the top could be a moon really easily and I thought that it would be really cool to have this like fantasy sci-fi mix kind of like I did for the bi flag where there's a mermaid but there's also a UFO. Um, so I decided to carry that through for this one as well. Um, I also did a bunch of butterflies sort of floating around. I just wanted it to have a very interesting like ethereal look. I uh, use these sort of elongated wings. I feel like they just look cooler. I used to draw much shorter wings, but I think I'm sort of becoming attracted to this like more elongated wing. And I just sort of took the exact colors of the flag and painted them out and like made them look a little rougher. So it started to look more like a um, sort of skyscape. Is that a word? Try to say that five times fast, it's really difficult. Um, but basically I wanted it to look like, you know, the scene that you see out of like an airplane. And then I put this big moon right above her, which made it feel a little bit more sci-fi, a little bit more mysterious, um, like she's flying really high. Uh, again, I wanted to have this sort of fairy tale element like I was trying to do in the lesbian pride flag. So I had her carrying a picnic basket, like she's just on her way to have a moon picnic or something like that. Um, I had a lot of fun with this one, because again, 
you know, the pastels like activated my brain and just made me want to draw really badly. So I think I ended up having the most fun with this one. I like the picnic basket idea because again, it kind of reminds me of Little Red Riding Hood, which is a famous coming of age story. And because uh, sort of figuring out your coming of age situation is such a big part of many trans people's lives, I thought that that would be a good thing to add in. I wanted her to be looking at something specific, so I put this little golden butterfly and I had it reflect onto her hair. I thought that looked really pretty, even though I know technically there's no yellow in this flag. Here are all of the illustrations together. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and had a fun and safe Pride Month. And this is kind of cheesy, but if anyone out there needs to hear it, you deserve to feel safe and to be treated with kindness. And if the people around you aren't respecting that, that speaks only to their character, not yours. Thank you so much to my patrons, including Bella Story, Calpum Pong, Clockwork Construct, Dope Elephant Art, Dr. Casket, Elizabeth Album, Imagine Creations, Ivan Rodriguez, JJ Jade, Joseph Copel, Justin, Carla Tapia, Katie Marigold, Kira Dittert, Live Love Love Love, Megan Claire, Micah Dactyl, Mr. Dr. Pants, Nora Cornelson, Nara Tofep, uh, Okamori, Ollie, Post-It Pixie, Rosie Warlock, Sergeant Pendulum, Spoy, Yardsy Moose, Yaboy ST, and Zoe Stardust.